I, I was uh, on my first spacewalk. I was out with a guy named Scott Perizinski, who's who's climbed Everest and, and uh, amazing guy, medical doctor, commercial airline pilot, brilliant fellow. Um, he and I were out on a spacewalk together, and I was working away, and, and suddenly my left eye just seared with pain and stopped working, like slammed itself shut. And you can't rub it on anything, you can't reach it because it's in a helmet. So I just kind of like, eh, you know, just tough it out. What am I going to do? I got something in my eye. I can't get it out of my eye. What do you, you, know, you could call down to Houston, but what are they going to do? You know, they're just going to say, so can you live with it? So I just ca- stayed quiet about it, live with it. But your eye tears up so badly trying to fight whatever the contamination is. And the tears don't drain because there's no gravity. So you just have this big, bigger and bigger ball of contaminated whatever it was until eventually the ball gets so big that it goes across the bridge of your nose and contaminates your other eye just from the surface tension of the tear flowing across. So then I was truly blinded. Couldn't see out of either eye. And it's not like my eyes were gone. They were just contaminated so bad that I could not, even if I forced my eyelids open against the pain, I couldn't see. There was too much murk. So uh, so I had to stop working. Then I can't follow the timeline anymore. I got to call down to Houston, let them panic about it and you know work all their problems. And of course, they're going to try and give me all the best advice they can. Talk to Scott. Could, could be a pretty... Uh, terrifying moment if you weren't ready for it. But Scott and I had gone through all the various training, all of all of the visualization we could think of. And while he and I had been underwater in the pool in at Houston, Texas at the Johnson Space Center so many times, 400 hours I think underwater. I mean divide that by 24. That's a lot of days underwater. Um, one of the many thousands of things we'd practice was what if one of us gets incapacitated? What if you get the bends, or you have a heart attack, or your comm system quits, or you have a horrible cramp, or or whatever, you punch a little hole in your suit. What if one of us gets incapacitated? How are we going to react? And so you practice, we call it incapacitated crew rescue. You practice being able to hustle over, getting the person, um, working with their various tethers and link-ups, and then bringing them like 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 a Macy's Day Parade float, you know, and bringing them back and, and then stuffing them into the airlock, which is not that easy because it's a small round hole and try to squeeze the person in and then crawling in with them and getting them hooked up to the ship's oxygen and cooling communications so that they can stay alive. Uh, we practiced that. And our, our trainers would sometimes, they'd come on the private loop and say, okay, pretend you just passed out. So that the other person had to even go, hey, Chris, how you doing? Chris? Chris, can you hear me? And then having to follow all the reactions to make it as realistic as possible. So when I was actually blinded, it wasn't so bad. Because like I can still talk and hear, and Scott and I are discussing, and I'm still holding on. I just can't see. And it's not going to be that hard to get me back into the airlock if that's the only thing we can think of. But we popped open the vent on the side of my helmet, and we let my oxygen squirt out into the universe, fed by the tank on my back so that um, it would hopefully dilute and, and clear my eyes as quick as possible. And from the time I first started having problems until I was back to work was about a half hour. Uh, but by the end of it, my eyes were stinging and I couldn't see great, but I could see well enough. Whatever it was had, uh, had diluted and evaporated off my eyes. I stopped squirting my oxygen out to the universe, which was a, a nice valve to close, and then got back to work. And if anything, it just made the first spacewalk more interesting. <laughs> you know, it, <laughs> we got everything done. It w- the rest of the spacewalk wasn't easy either. This was just, well, things aren't going to go right. Things are going to go wrong. We're going to have to face up. To, there were lots of little things, you know, procedural, mechanical forces, uh, torques, things that didn't go exactly as planned either. But by the end of it, when we finally, Scott got in, I got in, closed up the hatch, started to repressurize the airlock. It wasn't like the only thing we were talking about was the fact that I'd been blind for a while. It was, wow, that was a huge endeavor, a huge piece to try and bite off and chew up. And we'd succeeded and got everything done and, and, uh, and we're getting ready then for our next spacewalk to go finish everything up a couple days hence. 
pretty amazing day in the life. One of your mantras is prepare for failure, yeah. which is pretty much the entire mantra of NASA <laughs> and astronauts, right? That's yeah. what you do yeah. more so than anyone has a comprehension of. I think the movie Apollo 13 did a bit of justice to that because I think you got to see you know, the preparation and I think you got to see some of the teamwork and we can talk about that a little bit later, but you prepare for failure. You, pre you make redundancies upon redundancies upon redundancies. Sure. You train yourself. That's really what an astronaut's uh, about, right? To watch the rest of this fascinating interview, click on the link below and go to LondonRealAcademy.com. There you can sign in with your social media login and watch the rest of the episode for free, along with all of our episodes on London Real, my webinars, and all of our premium content, all located over at LondonRealAcademy.com. So click on the link below, you'll be directed there and you can watch the rest of this fascinating interview, and I'll see you there.